Today we're going to be talking about the five love languages from Dr. Gary Chapman. This is episode 40. Welcome to the show. Well, welcome. My name is Will Sinclair and you're listening to The Real Truth About You. And yes... Made it to episode number 40. I never thought I'd make it there. I have got my beautiful wife, Adrina, here. Say hi, Adrina. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's great to have her here in episode 40. 10 more, it'll be 50. Didn't think I'd even get here after episode 5. So, like I said, my name is Will Sinclair, and we are going to be um, talking about. The five love languages that Dr. Gary Chapman developed. And he has a book out called uh, The Five Love Languages. And it came out in 1980, no, 1992. And uh, it's gone through about four or five reprints since then. So a popular book. And its latest reprint is 2015. So that's only a year ago from now. And this is 2016. This is actually December. I was it 22nd? Yeah. Almost Christmas. And anyway, so we're going to be talking together about what this is all about. And it's something that actually made, I would say, quite a difference in our relationship. Would you not say so, Adrena? I would say so, yes. Once we were able to accept it and work with the, the love language that each one of us had. Right. And I'm just going to tell you what they are right now. This is what Dr. Gary Chapman, you can go out and buy his book, The Five Love Languages. Five Love Languages. I don't know why I'm tongue twisting on that. But anyway, uh, he came down to the fact that the expression of love, like how we interpret love, how we we experience. Or how we feel love from somebody else. From somebody else in our lives. How we feel love. Yeah, anyway, is is through different experiences, and I'm just going to let you know what they are. So one of them is words of affirmation, and we'll explain them in a little bit. And uh, then there's one called quality time, then receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And uh, we're going to go through them a little bit because uh, you can have one, I think one of those would be your main... Love line, dominant love language, but then you can have others that are also touching on that. And part of this came about with uh, uh, one of our daughters had called us, uh, our youngest daughter had called us one time. This is quite a while ago. And she was asking about like her boyfriend and how come he didn't respond in the ways that she thought and one thing and the other. And then we started talking about this, the five love languages that we'd actually found out about and so I'm going to explain them a little bit and we'll both explain them a little bit words of affirmation so that's my one that's that would be my dominant love language that would be the one that if you were to uh, do this I would know that you loved me right and we're and we are talking about uh, love languages and not the language of love right you're right. <laughs> anyway, so words of affirmation. So affirmation meaning to build up, to affirm. And those are the people you'll you'll find them. This is me, right? This is me. And, and I'm very much building up praise in people, right? Affirming people, building them up, thanking them. So you'll heal me. If you do something for me, you'll heal me. Thank you like five, six, seven times in a row, or right? Ten. Or ten. Or <laughs> ten. Adrina would do something and I would like, I'd be like, oh, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Oh, did I thank you, by the way? And she'd be like, yeah, <laughs> shut up already. So anyway, um, that's words of affirmations when you build people up. Quality time. Do you want to talk about that, Adrina? Uh, quality time is just making time to spend with that other person. Um, our our second daughter, second oldest daughter, um, her love language is quality time. So when we go to back home to where she lives, um, she loves to spend every waking moment that we are there with us. And if I don't make that time, then um, sometimes she'll get hurt. I mean, she's really good about it. She's an adult. But um, for her, spending time with her, quality time with her is... is um, 
is the way she feels like you care about her, that you love her because you've taken that time to sit down and watch a movie with her, or go out for supper, or whatever it is, even if it's just going shopping, any kind of time spent with her, visiting in the evenings, that kind of thing is, mm. that's very, very important to her. Right. And uh, receiving gifts, and that's not like, hey, adorn me with lavish jewelry or fast cars and stuff like that. That is more like, uh, it could be anything, you know, the thought that counts, right? Oh, yeah, for our, sure. our youngest daughter is like that, and it's the thought that counts, right? That you put the effort into the gift. It could be something you made. It could be a homemade card. She doesn't care what it is. It doesn't have to be lavish adorned something right or spend a lot of money on something but sorry go ahead no I was just gonna say yeah that's our youngest daughter she is her love language is, is very strong receiving gifts and for her um, like getting flowers on Valentine's Day is one thing and which is nice but getting flowers just because and it doesn't even have to be an expensive bouquet of flowers just the thought that a bouquet of flowers was brought just for no reason, just because I love you, um, goes such a long way with her. Or a small little token of something. It it doesn't have to be big, huge gifts. She just likes to, to for her, re- receiving those is like words of affirmation for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Would be like her receiving gifts. Right. And then there's acts of service. And I know that's your one. I just want to... Uh... Um, it, the, the the thing that hit this off and like, it, well, acts of service first as a description, what would you see acts of service are? When somebody does, when people do things for you, like for me, uh, you know, like, you know, like you've been cooking, I got home from work and you've had the house clean, you started a laundry. To me, that's acts of service. That goes such a long way with me. So and I, I will doing. be doing something for me or fixing like a doorknob that's been rattling for the last three years. Could you just fix the doorknob? You know, no. like. <laughs> You're talking so, to me, remember. My wife actually says, you know, uh, guys are either handsome or they're handy. And you're definitely handsome. Yeah, he is very handsome, but um, he's working on on being handy, and it's not, yeah, to, yeah. So anyway. doing things, right? Yes. Show me you love me through doing by things. doing things for me. Yeah. And then, then physical touch. Are are we talking about? You know, I think love it's touching. Yeah, and I think it, when you read Gary Chapman's book, I think it's really important to know that it's not just the the sexual act of physical mm. touch. It's just the, the Darn, g- gentle. Really? Because <laughs> oh, I was going to pick that one, physical touch. Yes. And just a guy Well, thing. he did mention that most men have a, a strong physical touch um, um, love language if you refer to it in a sexual way. But if it's just um, physical touch, um, you know, coming mm-hmm. up behind somebody and just, you know, you know, Touching, touching them, yeah. touching them, or yeah. or, or yeah, touching hugging their arm, them, or, or rubbing your hand on your yeah, face, shaking or, hand. or you yeah. know those people who shake your hand and they don't just shake your hand with one hand; they put your hand, their other hand, on top Over of your top, hand, yeah. and like, they really shake your hand. Yeah. Right? Those are people who their their dominant love language is physical touch. Right, right. And I think um, one thing to note is. Um, you can go do a survey online and to see what your your um, love language is. But if you s- just stop for a minute and see how you show love to other people. Like for me, mm. I'll do things for William. I'll make sure this gets done or that gets done or I'll do different things to make him feel loved. And because that's how I feel loved. And he can praise me and build me up and say nice things to me. But if he's not doing anything, then not, he, he, he's, right. he's showing me that he loves me in the way that he feels loved. But that's not how I'm feeling loved. So in a relationship, these can get, it can get a little bit confusing because you're trying your very best to show you love your partner to show your partner that you love them in the way that you feel love. But mm-hmm. if it's not the way your partner feels love, it's not. It, it's it's sometimes hitting a brick wall. So you have to find out what your partner's love language yes, is. If exactly. you want to show them love in a way that they really appreciate, right? Right. Because I know that um, 
I used to, because you're a doer, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and so that's your acts of service. That's your big thing, right? And so I remember I was always telling you, I love you, telling you, I love you. And then, and you were like, you, you couldn't kind of, you, you liked it, but you couldn't quite grasp it because I wasn't doing the dishes. Right. Right. If I did the laundry, if I did the dishes or I went out and mowed the lawn or it's even stuff that you do, right? Maybe. Right. Right. That then I'm showing you that I love you. Because right. I remember we got, we were at a point where you would do things for, for me and you would cook and you do laundry and you do so many amazing things. And, and then I would say to you, you, you'd say like, can't you see that I love you? And I would say, yeah, but you haven't told me today. Mm -hmm. You loved me. Yeah. Right. And so she had to get around to that point where she told me that she loved me because I am words of affirmation. Well, and I remember even when probably about four years back and I remember thinking, you know, I really have to, you know, I know Williams are words of affirmation. I am really going to work at that. And now I'm really going to start really working at building him up and telling him things. And I remember thinking, oh, this is so hard because it's not, <laughs> it's not something that came easily to me. So, but I really kind of, and I felt like I was always going over the top to tell him things. And I remember him saying to me one day, you just don't, you, you know, my love language is words of affirmation, yet you, you very rarely show me it that way. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what else can I do? Like, I felt like I was going over the top and to <laughs> him, I hadn't even touched the surface of, of showing him that way. I mean, there was other underlying things as well that, that were going on in our relationship at that time too. But still it's, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you can beat your head against the wall because you don't, because you're not measuring up to kind of what their expectation is of that love as well. So mm-hmm. that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, but basically get to know what your partner's love language mm-hmm. is. If you want to express love to them in the way that they, I don't know, experience and recognize and appreciate that love. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I could tell you till I was blue in the face that I loved you. And even though you liked it, it still didn't mean as much to you as me going, taking out the garbage or mm-hmm. doing things for them. I'm saying for in, in, in quotation marks for you, mm-hmm. right? Right. And so, and if quality time, we already talked about with our daughter, right? Mm-hmm. Spending time with each other. Yeah. And, and I know that, I know part of that is yours too and mine because mm-hmm. we like spending good time with each other. If we don't get good time with each other, then it, it, we don't even have to be visiting per se, right? Just mm-hmm. being in the same room, with each other is important right. to us yeah. too, right? Yeah. Even though your dominant one is acts of service and right. my dominant one is words of affirmation. Right. So you'll always you'll always find me, right, uh, building other people up. Right. Right. I'm always the one that if somebody does something, I'm the one, the first one to go up and say, wow, what an awesome job. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Right. It yeah. wasn't awesome. You did such a good job or I really like this or, hey, have you ever thought of this? Because I noticed you're really good at it. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's all words of affirmation. And, and and sometimes you hit off on the same person who's got the same kind of thing. Right. right? And that's great. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what we need to do is get all you acts of services together and then we can praise you and then you'll do things for us. <laughs> Is that what it's about? Yeah, and then nobody's oh. really fed at all. <laughs> Everybody just stands there and stares at each other. <laughs> right. So, like, again, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch, right? Mm-hmm. And we all delve in and out of those things all the time. Yeah, I think so. And, I mean, yes, some people have a really strong dominant, mm-hmm. a very, very strong dominant, like, You, our oldest daughter and our son are very, very strong words of affirmation. Very strong words of affirmation. You said that very well, by the way. I just want to compliment you on that. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Do you want to go shovel the driveway, please? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I got to go. So there's, there is, there's a, it's very, very strong. I think too, like the, the earlier you are you are in your relationship i guess it doesn't really matter where you are in your relationship but um the earlier you find out these love languages it really really helps you to to um in it it builds your relationship up 
Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think it's good. It might not be like a be all and end all of the relationship, but it really, really helps build the relationship up. And if things, things are kind of wavering in your relationship, um, finding out your, your partner's love language can really make a big difference. The only thing is, is when you find out what it is, you have to work at it. Mm-hmm. Like you have to work at, at using that love language to build that person up or to make them feel good or to show them that you love them. Um, There's no use knowing it if you're not going to do anything about it. And Mm -hmm. I know for the first, after I read the book, and I think you had read it too, or we had talked about it or whatever, we we didn't really, we didn't really grasp onto it for a lot of years after that. Um, And then it was kind of later on in our relationship where we said, you know, kind of started getting into it and realizing that it was very, very important. Um, sometimes we use it as an excuse not to, or there's mm-hmm. lots of other things, but I think, yeah, early on in your relationship or as soon as you hear about it is to really, yeah, try and grasp onto that. And and I think you have to make it your own too. Like, I think you have to, like, I noticed uh, earlier on when we were just practicing it, like, it's like anything else, right? It becomes habitual. It's like forgiveness. It becomes habitual. Uh, it's like doing things in your relationship. You, you start doing them until they become habitual and they become right. part of who you are. Just the same way as breathing is, right? Breathing's not a bad thing, right? So it's, it's something that's become a part of you. And so I remember the beginning steps, right? Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things you do have to watch, that I found that you have to watch for, right? Because uh, remembering that love is meant to be like true love is meant to be a, a one direction thing. So it comes from you out, mm-hmm. right? You expect nothing in return. If you're right. expecting things in return, then it's not true love. Right, right? I agree. Yeah. It's your ego and all that. Not, ego's not bad either, but it, it's those kind of things are mixed in with it, right? So when I first started doing the uh, the physical things, like because when I found out that your service is what you were, then I would start doing things. But then it was like I was doing them because they were your love language and they're not mine. And and then it became like I'm sacrificing and doing these things, but right. you haven't told me how much you love me and you haven't told me how nice my hair is today. Right. You know, all that kind yep. of stuff. So you have to be careful that you're not doing it like you're feeling like you're you're sacrificing yourself. Right. Right. And, oh, and you yeah. get because sacrifice creates resentment. Yeah. And you have to remember some of the things like if, if I'm as a person of affirmation or if you're not a person, you know, sometimes things just need like for affirmation, some things just need to be said. You need to every so often tell your partner how great they look. Or, yeah. You know, compliment them or you need oh, to say I think I love everybody. You. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody needs affirmation somewhere yeah. in their life, in the relationship. You need to be built up. Yeah. Sometimes. And acts of service. It's not everything that you do is like just to show your partner you love and some no, things just have to be done exactly. right exactly garbage has to be taken out you know yeah. plumbing has to be fixed or whatever it is yeah. right but i developed this attitude because you found it so hard to do the affirmation thing when i was doing the acts of service i was almost getting resentful right right that i was doing this and not getting it back right so we have to remember that we don't do it for something back, right? Well, We're doing yeah, it's it out not of like, love. Yeah, and it's not like one stroke for one and nothing yeah. for, you know, I, I did it three times today and you haven't done it once yet. It's, it, you know, that's not what it is. It's just being aware of it, being conscious of it and making a little bit of effort to to bring that out in the other person. And another thing I wanted to mention too is if you do have children, whether they are young children or adult children or teenagers, whatever it is, if you can find out, if you know what their love language is, it really, really helps building that relationship with your kids. Mm -hmm. Um, It's helped us a lot. I know I'm quite conscious of it. So it, it does help me to know what's important to, you know, the kids, mm-hmm. even though they are all adults. Yeah, now anyway. Yeah, well, they are now. Even when they were little, it was easy. It, like, once you found out what their love language right. is, right? Oh, yeah. Well, the earlier that you can find out, the better, of course. Yeah. You know, like even our granddaughter to know what her love language is. And and um, I think hers is quality time. Just any kind of time you spend with her, she just absolutely loves. Right. Which would be like and, her mother. <laughs> and it's just remembering, too... That it's a tool, 
Mm -hmm. These are tools to help you in your relationship. They're not the be all and end all. Right. Right. They're just expressions of love and ways Mm -hmm. to find out what, what, what drives your partner? What, what, right. you know, and that kind of thing. So I can tell Adrena I love her till she's blue in the face, but if she's left doing dishes all the time, she's going to feel resentful pretty soon, right. you know. Yeah. And and if I'm doing dishes all the time and she never tells me she loves me, or that right, I'm going to feel empty. Yeah, yeah. Or, or empty. That's why she, oh, is that why you tell me you appreciate me doing dishes? Uh-huh. Okay. You just keep doing them. <laughs> and that's how it works. <laughs> I'm just talking, no, I'm just joking. I think that's just a natural flow of our relationship now. So. Yeah. And, 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 and pretty soon you don't even think about it, mm-hmm. you know, but you tend to, once you've gone through it, you actually recognize it. Even in your coworkers or your friends, yeah. you start to say, oh, gifts, that's yeah. their thing. And, and it's not like materialism, right? It's, it's yeah. just like... Yeah, you make them a little card and just so love it. Just, yeah. hey, I just want to brighten your day up with this little card. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a great thing for even people who have affirmation to give to somebody who's access or, you know, receiving gifts, right? Yeah. Do something nice for somebody. Oh, like that. for so, sure. Yeah. And, and you'll be drawn to certain things more than others because it's more within your, you know, what your dominancy is for, right. that, for that love language. But, right. Anyway, you can go check that out. It's Dr. Gary Chapman, Chapman, and Dr. Gary Chapman, and it's called The Five Love Languages, and it's a book. And you can also go to, just do a Google search for Five Love Languages, and you'll find the website. Uh, and I might have it on the blog, too, on the on the website, therealtruthaboutyou.com. And I might put up the link up there, and then you can go find that out, because it's, it's actually worth learning. Right, it's one of those oh, extra so, things sure. in your basket for all kinds of relationships, not just partner to partner. Right. right? Oh, for sure. And uh, and we're not just uh, when we're talking partner to partner, we're talking all relationships. And so anyway, um, yeah, really exciting. Yeah, go go check that out. Is there anything else? What what would you like to? If there was anything you could talk about right off the top of your head, Adrian, what would it be? Um, right now. Yeah. Hmm. Like hmm. with the love languages. Anything. Anything at all. Oh, so okay. anything that comes to your mind, um, one dominant word, one that's coming to my mind is forgiveness for some reason. Don't know why. Oh, okay. No, I mean, just the, the topic of forgiveness. I mean, that's, we talked about uh, love languages uh, and how it becomes habitual. I think forgiveness becomes habitual too. And it doesn't mean that it loses its uh, emphasis or its meaning. Mm -hmm. But it becomes easier for you to forgive your partner for something the more often you do it. Right. Right? And you can forgive somebody when they haven't even apologized to you. Right? Well, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. So um, if you've got something, because I find that unforgiveness, right, and it's everywhere. Like, it doesn't matter what religion you're in or Bible or whatever Religion or even not religion, right? Even the secular world, unforgiveness is something that will erode you. It erodes everything. Yeah. It erodes everything, unforgiveness. If you've even in any kind of relationship, in any kind of situation, if there's unforgiveness, if there's resentment right. built up, then there's nothing there. You, you hit brick walls wherever you go. Yeah, it's like having an open wound. That you allow to to fester and not treat. When you don't treat an open wound, mm-hmm. then it's going to fester and it's going to become infected if it's not dressed properly. And it's something that we started early in our relationship. And I'm not going to delve into it big time, but it's just something that we started early on in our relationship. And we would do this thing where we'd say, sorry, and the other person would say, I forgive you. Right? right. And, it was, and realizing it's a decision, not an emotion. Right, we always wait for this big emotion of like, okay, finally, finally, you've done enough that I can forgive you. That's not that's not how it works, right? right. You can for, you can begin the process of forgiveness immediately, right? Right, you can just start it, even though you don't feel it, you can start it, and then the feeling comes later. The healing pro- once you start it, you actually begin the process of healing. Right, it just naturally starts, and you go up and down. There's layers to come off and things like that. But we we did this thing for so often it became habitual, and right. that, those are the things that last. So that when we bumped each other in the hall, we said, oh, "Sorry, 
The other one would say, I forgive you. And it became so, and the little things, it became so habitual. And when it, it came to big, big issues in our relationship, we had major, some major issues, right? Mm-hmm. That you almost felt like leaving me at one point. And um, that we were able to deal with because of that. Right. There's always something, whether you're right or wrong. Right. Even if you feel you're right, there's always something that you probably did in an argument that, that you can, you say, can say sorry, sorry for. for. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it just starts the healing process, even though the feeling's not there. Right. You know, the relationship, you want the relationship yeah, to last. It, it so. opens up for communication. Yeah. And it's worked really well for us, even yeah. though like we go out the door grumpy sometimes and, you know, and how can you be grumpy at me? Like, mm, really? Look at my face. I know. Yeah. Anyway, so... Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, right? Words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And forgiveness. Remember to forgive yourself, forgive your partner. You don't have to wait for the feeling. No, you don't. It is a decision, right? Same as love. Love is a decision. Anyway, you've been listening to Will and Adrena Sinclair, and we are on the Real Truth About You podcast, and you can go to therealtruthaboutyou.com and get more uh, downloads and information and resources and all kinds of stuff. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. You can, on our website, you can go into our contact page and you can fire us off an email from there or go support at therealtruthaboutyou.com. This has been episode 40, 40, like 40 episodes. That's unheard of for some somebody like me. Anyway, I want to thank my beautiful, beautiful wife, Adrena, who thank I you for lo- having me today. love so much. All right. Thanks for being on the show, Adrena. And thank you. My shows are more popular when you're on them. Let's be honest. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. So uh, go to the real truth about you.com. And it's been great to have you. Remember, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, I know you might be listening to this in July, but this is December for us. If you're listening to this and it's Christmas, happy Christmas to you. Be very blessed. You guys absolutely, absolutely rock, and we love you to bits.